Hello, this is Adam from Together Audio. Welcome to this three part video series where we'll be diving deep into the Gator's Pond to explore its cool features. We'll be starting with the rich sounding synth and global effects section, moving on to the flexible sequencer arpeggiator section, and finishing off with the awesome pad effects. Grab a free demo from TogetherAudio.com and explore Gator with me. Let's start then. To better understand Gator's synth section, we'll switch to free play mode which disables the sequencer and lets you play Gator as any other synthesizer. Gator's synth engine consists of two oscillators A and B, a super saw oscillator and a noise source. The first column of sliders adjusts the level of each of these oscillators. Here you have the coarse tuning in semitones and fine tuning in cents. The timbre can be adjusted by the last column of the sliders. So let's check this out and let's see what the timbre does. Oscillator A is a unison oscillator and the timbre adjusts between sawtooth and square. Oscillator B is a plain oscillator like you find on any synthesizer that mixes again between the saw and the square. In Super Saw, the timbre adjusts the detuning. And for the noise source, the timbre adjusts the color of the noise. Next we have the filter section, which is a low pass filter with the familiar cutoff and resonance controls. Here we have the mod wheel polarity checkbox. The mod wheel is wired so that when it is raised, it will close the filter. And if this is checked, it will open the filter. Next we have the filter envelope and the amp envelope. Let's try the amp envelope first with a super saw, slightly detuned and bright noise. We'll increase the attack time. And the main output volume of Gator is adjusted with this volume slider. Now let's look at the filter envelope. We'll use oscillator B set to saw. We'll close the filter a bit. Some resonance. And the amount of the filter envelope is controlled with the amount slider. We'll adjust some decay and release. Now let's look at the voices menu. Normally Gator is polyphonic. Checking the mono checkbox makes it monophonic. The legato filter checkbox will make the filter envelope legato. So if you play notes without letting go of the previous uh, note you held, so you play legato, the filter envelope will not re-trigger. So you have to let go of the note and play a new one to re-trigger the envelope. Then we have the glide. Again, glide is legato, so the slide in pitch only occurs between notes play legato. The slider, of course, adjusts the glide time. 
by clicking the always checkbox, you'll make the glide occur between any notes, whether they're played staccato or legato. Now let's turn on the sequencer and check out the global effects. First is the distortion, where you can adjust the drive and effects mix. The chorus, where you adjust the effects modulation rate, its intensity, and again the mix. The delay with the rate adjustable via the drop down with feedback and mix controls. And the reverb. This is a cool convolution reverb where you can choose impulses from the drop down and the mix control for the reverb. Thanks for watching. In part 2, we'll be exploring the sequencer and arpeggiator section. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to contact us through the togetheraudio.com website or any of our social media channels. Peace.